All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Mashiach, and Malak, Yahushai. By Yahweh, and being named the Heavenly Father, who the world will call God. And Yahweh Shai, being named of His only begotten Son, who the world will ignorantly call Jesus Christ. All right, it's Brother Kasadia from W5 Jersey, Philly. All right, we want to touch on today, as you see with the title of the video, right, there is no free will. There's no such thing as free will, right? There's no uh, such thing as man, you know, doing his own thing and, you know, he can kind of uh, choose to obey God and not obey God. None of that's, that's not in the Bible, right? Everything from the beginning was ordained. Everything was created on high from the Most High God, right? And man is just fulfilling the role, right? Like um, like the brothers, we, we normally say, you know, uh, the Most High has created this elaborate movie script and he's the executive producer. And every everyone that's in the movie just has to fulfill the things that's written on the script. Right? You can't kind of say, no, I don't want to do this. Or, oh, can I change this script? And can I change this line? Or you kind of doing your own thing. You kind of you kind of toss out. You kind of got your movie script on this paper. Right? You kind of looking at it. It was given to you. You know, and you kind of, you kind of on that ladder end of the script. Now you're saying, you know what? I got another script. And you kind of pull out another script out your pocket. The Lord's not dealing with that, man. So man is going to fulfill the things that the Most High has written out for them. Or right? it's not up to you to say, you know, I don't want to do that. Right? Everyone has to fulfill what the Most High said. So let's get some precepts on that. So no, there's no free will. Everything is predestinated. Right? In the world, you might say, um, oh, it's my destiny. Or I can manifest this. Or I can do this. Or I can do that. Nah, man. The Most High did that. Right? This is the book of Psalm. This is the book of Psalm, chapter 24 and verse 1. Right, Psalm 24 and 1, it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So everything that's in the earth and all those that dwell in the earth is all of the Lord. So the Lord has created different things in his earth, right? He's created the earth. He's created the trees. He's created the cattle. He's created the, the sheep. He's created the, the uh, moon and the stars and the sun. And he's created you. Everything belongs back to the Lord. Everything was ordained by the Most High God. All right. So the things in the earth, the moon can't say, "Nah, I want to be, I want to be red now, or I want to be blue all day, or I want to be green, I want to be yellow." No, the, the moon is gonna be whatever the, the color the Most High put out in the earth at that a, a specific time. The sun can't say, "I want to be brown, and I want to shine brown all day." Nah, man, it's gonna it's gonna be a reddish orange. Because the Most High ordained it that way. Just like how man, man can't say, I want to do this, I want to do that. The Most High does whatever he wants to do. All right, another precept. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Okay, so we're reading about um, it, whether or not there's predestination, right? Or whether or not there's free will on this earth, right? And again, there's no free will. But this is Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. And it reads... It says, declaring the end from the beginning, right? So the most side from the from the end or beginning of the earth, he's declared the end from it. Like um, things are prophesied thousands of years ago. Before that, though, it was ordained already in the spirit world before anything was even laid out. A so-called blueprint, right? Before basketball teams go out there on the court, they already been practicing and practicing those whatever they're going to do on the court was already ordained via a game plan. Or a football team, likewise, they've been working on them all week, all year, preparing for a team. Don't, don't, they didn't just go out there and just, you know, start just doing things and kind of freestyling. Things aren't just freestyle. Things have to be practiced, um, articulated, and well thought out. Everything the Most High has done in this earth, everything that's in this earth has been well thought out by the Most High God. Right? Read it on. It says, um, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So the Lord said, my counsel is going to stand. Meaning whatever the Lord wants to do, that's what's going to remain in the earth. He said, I'm going to do all my pleasure. So whatever the most High wants to do, that's what he's going to do, man. If he wanted to make you damn two feet tall and make you a dwarf, then the Lord going to do that. You can't go get surgery and trying to stretch yourself out and do what you want to do. Nah, man, you don't have that own. There's no, there's no uh, free will in this Bible, right? You can look it up. You can type up free will. The only time you're going to see free will is if it's a free will offering. There's no free will. 
There's no, I'm going to do my, I'm going to manifest my own stuff. That's not in here. Right? So now it's time to humble back down and, and remember that we have a most high God and that he'll put you and give you over to whatever he wants to give you over to. So you ask for mercy, right? You come back and serve the Lord on a lower level. On the ultimate level, it's already ordained whether you want to serve the Lord or not. Right? Another precept is Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 27. Right? And this is Isaiah 14 and 27. It says, For the Lord Yahweh, well, for the Lord of hosts have purposed, and who shall disannul it? Right? The Lord, he um he wanted certain things to happen. Who can then change and say, Well, look, I don't want it to be that way, Lord. The Lord said that you wanna um, you know, you you might lose your damn house. Who who wanna say, Well, Lord, I don't want it to be that way? Look, man, you gotta deal with it. All right. You pray for them for, pray for mercy of the most high, and that the most high, you know, either gives you your house back or gives you another house. But it was already ordained from the beginning for that to happen. All right. It says, and his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Who can say, Lord, no, you know, don't do X, Y, and Z. Don't destroy all the firstborn in Egypt. Don't um uh don't uh, send the children of Israel in captivity at 14 captivities, right? Seven major ones. Don't do that. Who, who's gonna be able to say that, man? If the Lord sets it out on the earth, no man can draw it back. If the Lord puts, let me get that quick precept. That's second Ezra 16. Right? If the Lord puts fire, pestilence, death in the earth, who can say Lord turn it back? This is um wisdom of Saki. This is second Ezra chapter 16. And verse 3, 2 Ezra 16 and 3, a sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? Who can say, look, Lord, I don't want death to be in the earth. You stop that, Lord. You kind of They kind of look at them to the heavens, kind of put their finger up. You stop that, Lord. I don't want this to be so. Who can do that, man? Because you're just a man at the end of the day. Right? We just dust and ashes, earth and ashes. That's what the Lord said. Why is earth and ashes proud? How can you boast against the most high God? How are you going to forget your maker and think that you can do something or that you can create your own stuff or that you hired in the most high God or that your thoughts are his thoughts or that your ways are his ways or that you can manifest things in this earth? I mean, you, that's foolishness, man. It's time to turn back to the most high God right now, man. The Lord about to put death in this earth. The Lord's about to put different famines and different pestilences in the earth, man. The Lord's going to shut the lights out. The Lord's going to have certain FEMA camps set up. The Most High God is about to destroy this earth with fire and brimstone. Like he did in the city of Pompeii, like he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, like he's going to do to America. All right, so the Most High God is not one to play around with, man. So it's again, it says a fire is sent upon you, or it's like among you, and who may quench it? Who's going to be able to stop the different things, the different plagues and pestilences that the Lord is going to put on this earth? the different wildfires, the different volcano eruptions. Who's going to be able to stop these things, man? If the Most High ordained it, then it's going to be so. All right. So let's get another precept on this. Let's go to the book of, um. let's go to the classic real quick. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 3. Right, Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So the Lord has certain things, certain visions and prophecies set up from the beginning that was given to these prophets that was ordained to happen later on, right? Um, it was preordained that from the beginning of the earth, these things to happen. Blueprints were given out to these prophets. Now, they weren't, for instance, there's um, uh, different prophecies in 2nd Ezra. That's written some around 400 to uh, 500 to 400 BC. Now these things, they haven't fully happened yet. All these things haven't taken place yet. But these things are set for an appointed time, appointed season. Now in the last days, they're going to be playing out. So again, things are already ordained by the Most High God. It's just for man to fulfill what's written out. It's not for man to say, you know, he has the ability to change things. Or, or for the so-called 5% of man that walk by and say, I am God, I can create different things. No, you can't, man. The most I create these things, man. If you can, if you, if these damn 5 percenters, if you can create things, then get us up the hell out of this captivity, man. Bring us back to our homeland. Right? Stop the so-called white man from shooting and killing us. 
Stop your brothers from shooting and uh, killing each other. If you can actually change things. But you can't change a damn thing. Why? Because the Most High ordained everything. All right. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter uh, 1 and verse 5. Right? So the, the Lord even ordained certain men to be prophets in this thing. The Lord ordained certain teachers. The Lord ordained certain rulers. And the Lord ordained the elect. And those is going to get the kingdom. From the foundation of the earth, he ordained these things to be so. A man is not going to just stumble across the uh, being a part of 144,000. No, it was ordained from the Most High God, from the spirit world, from on high, from the beginning, from ancient times. Who's going to be a part of the elect or not? Who's going to be destroyed or not? Who's going to be giving the kings to the kingdom of heaven or not? Or it's like the keys to the kingdom of heaven. These things were ordained. This is Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. The Lord said before he created this or fashioned Jeremiah in the belly, he knew him. How did he know Jeremiah? Because he created Jeremiah. And he put that spirit in Jeremiah. And for lack of a better term, he kind of programmed Jeremiah, right, to do one thing. He, he all, we all got a program, right? And we just fulfilling what's, what's, what's our program, whatever the script is. It says, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So the Lord said he, before Jeremiah came out of the womb, he sanctified him and ordained him to be a prophet unto the nations. So Jeremiah had no choice whether or not, you know, he wanted to be. If Je Jeremiah couldn't say, I want to be an astronaut. I want to go walk around Times Square all day and take pictures. You know, I want to be a flight attendant. Jeremiah didn't have no thought over that. He ain't say he wanted to be an NFL player and went to go do that. A lot of so-called black men grew up saying, you know, they want to be football players. They want to be um, basketball players. But those things don't happen because the Lord didn't ordain every man to damn play basketball and be in the NBA and walk around sweaty and touch on another man. The Lord didn't ordain those things to happen, man. Nor walk around in damn tight ass spandex and damn football, man, playing football or whatnot. So that's not for every man, nor is it for every man to be in a damn corner, nor is it for every man to be in prison, nor is it for every man to be a teacher or a lawyer or whatever, a doctor. Those different things was ordained from the foundation of the earth. And they might seem like little things, but that's what the Most High has done. He's ordained everything. Everything is in uh, the will and power of the Most High God. Right, let me get another priest up on this. All right. So everything is controlled by the Most High God. Con, this is um Isaiah chapter 48 in verse 3. It says, I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, and I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. So the things that's written in this earth, the things that's fulfilling in this earth, these things were ordained by the mouth of the Most High God, and they suddenly came to pass. They did not come to pass. It wasn't an idea that just kind of blew up in the midair. Those things happen. Things are still happening. The Lord ordained <clears throat> Again, prophets of old that's out here teaching the things that the writ that's written in the Bible that the Lord ordained thousands of years ago, even prior to that. All right. So you got to understand how feeble you are in the whole whole retrospective of, of the, um, the Most High God. Right. It's the Most High. And then it's you. You at the bottom. You, nothing you can do um, to change whatever the Most High has set out for you. You can pray and the Most High might have mercy upon you. But that's it. You can fast, right? You can change your garments. You've got areas of hair. You can wash yourself. But ultimately, the Most High is going to do whatever he wants to do because it was ordained already. All right, so another precept. Let's get the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, and verse 21. All right, and this is Proverbs 19 and 21. It says, There are many devices in a man's heart. So a man might think, Oh, I'm going to go to store. I'm going to go to the store. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to um, this city, or I'm going to go hop on an airplane, or I'm going to go take a trip to damn Dubai. There's many devices in a man's heart. It says, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So whatever, the, it says, nevertheless. I mean, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, the end all be all is that whatever the Most High has prepared, that's what it's going to be. Right? You can't say I want steak when the Lord say he's making chicken. If you got ears to hear Whatever it is, prepare to the Lord. That's what it's going to be. All right. Let's get another precept on this. So again, 
There's no damn predestination or um, there's no damn free will. This is Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 13. It says, yeah, before the day was. Slocky, this is Isaiah 43 and 13. It says, yeah, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? The Lord said, let me read that again. This is Isaiah 43 and 13. It says, yeah, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? The Lord said, I'm going to put things in the earth. Who's going to stop it? If the Lord were to shut different things down, who's going to be the one and say, look, let me um, let me kind of change this up, Lord. All right? Let me, I want to go about it a different way. Nah, man, the Lord controls everything. Let me get this preset. All right, I was just thinking about something. In the book of Job, I believe it's Job chapter 12. This is, Job, it's like, this is Job 11 and verse 10, right? Job 11 and 10. If he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? So the most High is shutting different things down. Who can uh, be the one or a man or a woman, right? And, you know, Eve, they're kind of proud thinking that they, you know, run different things in this earth. Who can say, hey, let me change this up. Let me change this up. Let me be the one to um, do this. The Lord said this. Hey, let me um, let me change it like so. These things are not ordained. So, like, give me one second. Bear with me one second. All right, Salaki, so Salaki. So right, let me get this precept again. All right, this is Job chapter 11, verse 10 from the top. It says, if he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? Or who can stop the will of the Most High God? Is whatever the Most High wants to do, right? That's why He's the Most High. That's what it tells you in Psalm chapter one fifteen. Let me get this Psalm one fifteen and three, right? Psalm one fifteen and three. But our God is in the heavens; He had done whatsoever He had pleased. So whatever it pleases the Most High to do, that's what He's going to do, right? Man can't say, "Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that." It's whatever the Most High wants to do. Because at the end of the day, man, we just you know, we just dust and ashes, like we mentioned already, right? This is, um, Salaki. Yeah. This is, um, Job chapter 25 and verse 4, right? Job 25 and 4. How then can man be justified with God, right? How can man think that he, um, he's on the same time scale as the Most High or same level as the Most High, right? Then Meek say a few years ago is levels to this thing, man. It's levels to this thing. It's the most high, right? It's his son. And you all we down here, young blood, right? You down here. That's what the most high is telling us, man. You need to realize that. You're not on the same level as the most high. You, the Lord really not pleading with us, for real, right? These things is ordained from the foundation of the earth. Whatever role he's going to give you, whatever path he's going to give you, he's going to give you over to your, your own thoughts. He's going to give you over to the world. Right, it's gonna ordain you to be on high, whatever the case may be, man. These things are of the most high God. All right, let's get another precept on this. Let's go to Job the 12th chapter. Right, Job 12 and 7. Right, it's the book of Job, chapter 12 and verse 7. Right, Job 12 and 7. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Right. So you go out and observe. You got to be a so-called naturalist. You got to observe the things that's out on the earth. You got to observe the ants. You got to observe the trees. The Lord told you in, I believe it's Luke, the 12th chapter, uh, consider the lilies. Right. You got to observe the things in the earth because everything was ordained. Every Nothing is not moving. Everything is moving. Everything is um, uh, doing the will of the most high God. So observe the things that's in the earth. Right. And that's what give you that can give you wisdom. Verse eight. It says, or speak to the earth and it shall tell, it's like you, verse eight, or speak to the earth and it shall teach thee and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Right. So talk again, talk to the things that's of the earth. It, the Lord says, speak to the earth and it shall teach thee. Don't cry out to the earth. Meaning, look, just observe the things that's around you. Right. Go out and meditate in the field. Right. The fishes of the sea, it'll declare different things to you. Verse nine. It says, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord have wrought this. I'll read that again. 
It reads, verse 9, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of Yahweh had wrought this? Who doesn't know that the Most High has ordained everything? How foolish are you to think that you're above the Most High and that you can create different things and that you can do your own thing? And the agenda that the Most High has laid out for you, you can go ahead and change that up. You can flip the script on the Lord. You can tell the Lord what to do. Nah, nah I don't like this. I'm going to do this though. Who the hell are you? You can't even do that to your own parents. You can't even do that to your own self. Right? Whatever the, whatever your flesh wants to do, is going to do at the end of the day. Why? Because the most are ordained it to be so. So now we got to come back and we got to be more spiritual men. We got to rule our bodies. Right? And ask the most high to put us in subjection uh, in, in fear of the Lord and wisdom and understanding. And not doing what doesn't please the most high. All right? So the reason why certain men probably think, you know, there's, you know, they got their own, uh, they can do their own thing. They got these different options in the earth. They can choose to serve the Lord. They cannot choose to serve the Lord. They can choose to serve uh, Shiva and uh, these different gods. They can serve Baal, whatever the case may be. They can serve Dan, the spiritual demon, Satan, just straight up. Man thinks he can do these different things because the Lord, um, for lack of a better term, kind of gave man two options. And it's not on a it's not on a literal sense because again we just read all the precepts showing that everything was ordained from the foundation, but on a lower level, the Lord is allowing man. Hey, you choose the world, then that's you choosing death. You choose to serve the Lord, that's you choosing life. Right on a lower level, those things are so. Right, this is um, this is Deuteronomy thirty and fifteen. Right, Deuteronomy thirty and fifteen. See, I have set before thee this day life and good. And death and evil. So there's a so-called choice. In the wilderness, Moses gave the children of Israel a so-called choice. If you keep the commandments of the Lord, you'll be set on high. If you don't keep the commandments of the Lord, you'll be cursed. If you keep the commandments, you'll have blessings. If you don't keep the commandments, you're going to be put to death. That's the so-called choice that was given to the children of Israel in the wilderness. Now we know it was ordained from the foundation for the children of Israel not to fully serve the Lord at that time. Because it was not ever given to man to enter into the tree of life immediately. Right? It was to be set on scene that the Lord would have to come back down or Yahweh would come back down. And for men had to believe in Yahweh for them to enter into life everlasting. To believe in a word. For the law to be placed in the inward parts. Those are the different things that the Lord has set up from the foundation of the earth. Right? Now you might say, well, why is it so? Why didn't the Lord just allow man to serve the Lord from the beginning. Because the Lord didn't want it that way. Right? Who was you to reply to reply against God? To boast against your creator? To ask what is this and what is that? Who is you? You're nothing but damn earth and ashes. Alright? So we got to play out what the Lord has uh, ordained. Now I mentioned earlier the Lord has ordained certain men to, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Lord has ordained certain men to never taste of death. Let me get that real quick. Right. So certain men that's here today and certain women will never taste the death. Right. They, they never die. Now, it's not I'm not talking about, you know, they live in three thousand years. You know, they kind of old and crippled and they kind of in their, their deathbed or their whole damn life. Nah, man, that's not, what we're, that's not what we're talking about. Through the flesh, we know, you know, things get weak and and whatnot. And man gives up. But through the spirit. There are certain spirits that was programmed to never die, meaning never truly taste of death, but always be given, um, always being replenished by the Most High God, right? So this is Matthew chapter 16 and verse 28. And ultimately, those that believe in the Lord, they're the ones that's entering into life. Those that don't believe in the Lord, they're the ones that's entering into uh, damnation. Man, they're going to be destroyed by the missiles. That's what it means when we read this verse right here. This is Matthew 16 and 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Right? So, the, so there are certain men in this earth that's not going to taste of death till they see Yahweh Shai coming in his kingdom, coming in his authority. And a great glory to Most High God. Certain men is going to be set up to be rulers and generals and governors. Right? Rulers over 10,000 cities, 5,000 cities. Right? 100 cities, 50 cities, one city. That's the, that's what's given to the elect. That's the predestination of certain menace in this truth. 
Let's get some more precepts on this. So you got um again, you got men that's gonna be sitting upon a um upon the thrones with the Lord. You got certain men that's here today that is Paul, that is Timothy, that is um uh Peter and uh James and John, right? And Bartholomew. This is um second Timothy. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10. 2 Timothy 2 and 10. Therefore I ordain, sorry, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may obtain a salvation, which is in Yahweh, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, with eternal glory. Right? So there's, again, there is an elect that's going to get salvation with eternal glory. Meaning from the beginning to the end, it was ordained for them to be set up to be rulers. Right to not to uh, succumb to the society and succumb to these bodies, but to ultimately always have life everlasting. Right. Let me get another precept. This is Second Timothy chapter one and verse nine. It says, "Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling?" Right. The Most High God through His Son Yahweh Shai saved us and ordained us from being niggas, from being thugs and hoodlums and crooks, from from being, being damn stick up kids and robbing our brothers. From being harlots and hoes and thoughts. Damn, selling their bodies and whatnot. Right? It says the Lord has saved us. And called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works. But according to his own purpose. Right? Because you might wake up and say, well, what is the purpose? What's the Lord? What's the reason why the Lord got me up today? Or why does he want me still in this earth? Why does he still want me in his truth? That's not of you to think about. Right? Hey, the Most High has his own purpose uh, for you. He can have you just to be in his truth for a period of time to be an example when you do fall out to all the brothers and sisters to not act like how you acted, to not be a nigga, how you often went back into the world and you really wasn't about this thing. You can just be set up to be an example or, you know, it's set up to be an example that, you know, for you not to be like this, or it could be an example to show, look, even though I came in his truth and I was a nigga and whatnot, and the Lord had mercy upon me time after time again and allowed me to continue to repent and continue to change my ways and continue to mortify my members so that I was able to know Lord willing make make it to the kingdom. And Lord willing had that crown placed on your head. Right? It says, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Hamashiach Yahawashai before the world began. So there's a certain grace that was given to men today. Before the world began, right before the foundation of the earth, but they were sanctified in the spirit world, where the blood of the Lord Yahweh Shai was sprinkled upon them, even from the foundation, like it tells you in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. All right, verse 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who had abolished death. So Yahweh Shai Mashiach abolished death. I Meaning he overcame death. That's what he did when he was resurrected. He overcame death. And now all those that believe, they'll overcome, it's like it, they'll overcome death as well. If you believe in the Lord, you'll overcome death as well, man. Right? The Lord told you in Psalm 118 and 17, right? I should, so like, let me get the precept real quick. I'm going to come back to this. I won't misquote it. This is um, Psalm 118. And 17, Psalm 118 and 17, it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So certain men is not going to die in this thing. They're going to live and they're going to declare everything the Most High set uh, forth to their lips to declare, to put out on this earth, to get men um, to be uh, um, in subject again to the Lord, to remember the ways of the Most High God. Right. This is again, Second Timothy chapter one and verse 10. But now is made manifest by the by the appearing of our, our Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who has abolished death and have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So this gospel is allowing souls to be redeemed and to complete the mission that was ordained and programmed for them. The gospel does. Let's get some more precepts on this. All right. So, um, Salakia, yeah, this is, um, this is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23, right? Hebrews 12 and 23, it reads to the general assembly 
and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the and to Yahweh, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Right? How were they made perfect? We're gonna read the next verse. And to Yahweh Shai, the mediator of the new of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speak of better things than that of Abel. So the spirit world, these these men were made perfect through the sprinkling of the blood of the Lord in the, in the heavens for them to come back down on this earth and or uh, fulfill the role that was set life after life, generation after generation for man to continue to believe in the most high God through his son, Yahweh and be ordained to have an uh, everlasting kingdom. Again, everybody's not going to make it into this thing. Everybody's not going to believe in this thing. It was only ordained for certain men to believe. And so a woman to believe, right? Another precept to prove this. Let's go to the book of, um, let's go to the book of Titus, chapter one and verse one, right? So this is Titus one and one. It says, Paul, a servant of Yahweh and an apostle of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, according to the faith of Yahweh's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life. Which Yahweh that cannot lie promised before the world began. So the Lord promised certain spirits life everlasting before the world began. We just read where that took place at in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. In the spirit world, the Lord sprinkled um, the blood of the Lord, meaning uh, the ability for man to believe in this thing. Because there's no way to get to the Father or to get to the kingdom without the Lord. You need Yahweh Shai. Certain men saying they the Old Testament only and they, they want to offer up sacrifices still. The Lord not dealing with that. Right? You can continue to offer sacrifices, but you got to clean your conscience. And you do that by believing in the Lord and being refreshed and knowing he died for you and knowing he sprinkled his blood on you and that through his blood you're saved and redeemed. All right? So that's only taking place for certain men. Not everybody. Not It might not be me. It might not be you watching. Right? But then again, it could be. And then again, it could be me. All right, it's all of the Lord. It's all of his work. It's not about man, what they do, and how many videos you make, and how many times you go out to camp. You can do all that for vanity. The Lord will still snatch you out this thing and take your spirit and give it to somebody else. It's all of the most High God and his grace and his mercy. That's why you got to pray for that every day. This is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, I'll start at Ephesians 1 and 3. It says, blessed be the God... And father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So the Most High God is the father of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is not the Most High God. Right? So there's no Holy Trinity. And that's another cut for that. It says, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So the Lord has chosen certain men in the Lord. From the foundation of the world. Predestinated. Not for man to say, you know, not for me to say, I, I want to make it in college. I want to continue to be a double major in marketing and, and a damn finance. And I want to go to Wall Street or I want to start my own business and whatever the case may be. That was in my role in this thing. My role was to go to school for one year. In the midst of that year, find out about the truth and complete the rest of that year. And then after that, you know, fully hop in this thing. That was my my um uh, role that was laid out for me, for me to come out and be a teacher and to speak the Lord's word for the most high to have mercy on me and Lord willing continues to have mercy upon me. But that was that was my role. Your role. You know, everybody got their own role in this thing. Right. Everybody got their own purpose. Again, reading on in Ephesians chapter one and verse four, it says, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Mashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, and whom we have redemption through his blood. Right? So you have redemption through his blood. You're predestinated through the Lord's blood. You're called for salvation through the blood of the Lord. If the Lord's blood never covered you in the spirit world, then you ain't going to make it in this thing. You, you know, you're going to be destroyed. Just like how, you know, they had to take the blood and put it on the doorpost during the time of um, 
uh, the destroyer coming through Egypt, right? That destroyer is Yahweh Shai. And that, um, when Yahweh Shai came through and killed all the firstborn in Egypt, if the if the blood of the Lord never covered you in a spirit world, then when he comes back down, he's going to destroy you. Right? It's as simple as that. It says, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he had bounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Right? I'm going to jump down. To, well, I'm going to read on. That in the that in the dispersation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Hamashiach. So the Lord said, in a dispensation of times, meaning over the course of time, from the foundation, he again, he wanted man to believe in the Lord, <clears throat> to believe in Yahweh Shai. And now those that believe in Yahweh Shai, he's going to gather them all back up together with Yahweh Shai and be sanctified and uh, joint heirs with the Lord Yahweh Shai when he rules his earth. It says, together in all things, it's like you together, and one, all things in Hamashiach, both which are in heaven and which are on which are on earth, even in him and whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who work of all things after the counsel of his own will. So those again, there's men that's predestinated according to the most high's own will, not man's free will. There's no free will for man. Man can't do his own thing. The Lord doesn't want nobody to sin. The Lord doesn't want nobody to be wicked. But those things, man thinks he can do those things. Chiefly, is the Lord giving you over to those things. All right, so we got one more precept on this. And that's the spirit. And this is Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Right, Romans 8 and 28. It reads, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who who are called, it's like who are the called, according to his purpose. Right? Because man didn't never choose the Lord and say, look, I want to serve the Lord now. I'm going to drop everything. I'm going to put this Dutch away. I'm going to put this bun away. I'm going to put this back wood back in my pocket or toss it out. I'm going to stop dealing with these women. I'm going to stop dealing with the other nations. I'm going to stop being a nigga and a nigga woman. I'm going to stop twerking on this damn stripper pole. That was never for a man or a woman to do. That was all of the most high to make you stop those things and come into the truth and come into the knowledge of your heritage, right? That was only for the most high God to do. It wasn't for a man to, you know, think he could do his own thing, right? Reading on, it says, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. And with that, Lord willing, we all count it as the justified and the glorified and the called and the elect. And Lord willing, a part of the 144,000, you chosen men. With that, one bit of strong shalom, continue to endure. Watch for these prophecies. Continue to make your body a living sacrifice for the most high's sake and the elect's sake. Right? With that, Kwame Shalom.